Hi there, my name is Becky Berg and I'm going to be sharing with you the 5th grade BPS Common Core Math Assessments and part one is going to relate to the development process and the printable assessments that are available to you. So first let me talk a bit about the process. Um, the team, the 5th grade assessment team and myself really worked hard on making sure that these assessments were aligned to the Common Core standards. Um, and in order to do that, the first thing we had to be aware of is what is this Common Core standing asking our students to know and do? Um, a lot of us are finding the language to be a bit difficult to understand if we're just looking at the pacing guide and reading just the standard. So what we found ourselves doing all the time and frequently going back to was the Math Practice and Content Common Core Standards document. Um, this document has been available to you and it can be found at the link listed above. Um, and this basically unpacks the standard. So for example, if I were working on numbers and fractions standard number two for fifth grade, if I go to that particular standard in this document, not only does it list what the standard is over in the left hand column, but the bullets unpack that standard by skills and then over here on the right it provides some explanations and examples of what that standard looks like and means. Really helpful tool um, as we're trying to wrap our brain around some of these different ways of teaching. Um, so if you look at the next page this also relates to 5NF2. A little bit more information as to what this standard looks like. Okay, And there would even be more on, on the next page as you can see. So this was so valuable to us because as we developed these assessments we kept thinking about conceptual and procedural knowledge. Um, we wanted to make sure that these were aligned so this document was really helpful. We also utilized a variety of these resources that we have access to. Um, so once we understood what the standard was asking us to teach, um, then we went through and we really used a variety of resources. We used Mastery Connect. Um, we really filtered through that though because some of those assessments, if you're not looking at what the standard's asking, are not always aligned. Okay, So we did some filtering, revising, and editing of what was even there. Um, Scott Forsman, Addison Wesley, the bridge supplement that we have for fifth grade, the little soft-sided textbook, if you will. Um, we utilize that along with the access that um, we have with the online teacher's edition for that supplement. That was a great resource. We utilize two websites called Inside Mathematics and Illustrative Math Sites. Those are both very much aligned to Common Core, and um, we pulled some performance tasks and some of the ideas from there. Um, these are pretty rigorous and, and do a nice job of showing us how um, assessing standards will look different. We also used um, a couple different books that we had access to, Good Questions for Math Teaching and Beyond Pizzas and Pies Fractions um, were two that we utilized. And then we also just really looked at the pacing guide resources and we considered, well, what resources are we using to teach the standards? So we wanted to make sure that um, whatever assessments we developed, that they were clearly aligned with those resources that we had access to. Right, so to access the BPS Grades 4 and 5 assessment website, um, one way to access that site is to go to tinyurl.com forward slash 45 assess. And this website will also be listed on the Curriculum and Instruction site as well as the K6 Common Core Math website that I've developed. So here we are at the 4 or 5 Common Core Math Assessments website. And you'll notice there are two tabs, one relating to 4th grade and then one relating to 5th grade. And they're both set up the same way. So you'll notice that under 5th grade we have the five domains of our Common Core listed. And so that's how our standards are organized, all right? So um, for today's example, we're going to focus on taking a look at fifth grade number and operations fractions, keeping in mind that each domain is set up in the same way. So let's take a look at how this is set up. 
basically for this domain, numbers and operations fractions, you'll notice a blue heading for each particular standard, and then the assessments will be found underneath that. Okay? So let's take a look at the different types of assessments you'll have access to. You'll notice a gray icon next to these particular standards, and that's just going to let you know that it's in a Google Doc format. Okay? So if I click on View, it's going to open it up for me. So this is 5NF1 Assessment 1. You'll notice that the standard is listed at the top. We've done that for each of these. And um, here you'll notice that as I scroll down, many of these are multiple choice. Okay, not all of them are like this. The assessments will vary. And then questions 10 and 11 are more of an open response, explain your way of solving. Okay? And then the answer key is listed down on a separate page. So if you wanted to utilize this assessment, all you would need to do is simply click on print. Okay? All right, so a couple other options you would have um, to use this assessment is you can either directly print it, as I just showed you, or you can go to File, Make a Copy, because right now you're just viewing this assessment. And I'm going to call it Berg 5NF1, assessment number one, okay? And you could just leave it as copy of assessment. I'm going to click OK. What this has done is this particular assessment is actually in my Google Drive account, okay? So you can see now that I could edit this. Now I could go in and make any changes to this that I might want to add, okay? So... Um, might be some options for you if, if you want to bring it into your own Google Drive account, okay? Um, some teachers like to add, if, if they're story problems, they like to use their students' names um, to make it a little more personal. Maybe you just want um, five questions versus ten and you want to pick and choose. So this gives you some options. I know a lot of you um, work in PLC groups and in this these assessments could be a starting point for common assessments that you're developing, okay? So the other option that you would have is, I'm going to go ahead and come back here again and click on 5NF1. You can also go to File and download any of these assessments into your Word um, software program. So if you wanted to click on Word, it will download that and then you could open it in Microsoft Word. Okay, just like any other download that you might do. So you'll also notice that some of these assessments are listed as performance assessments. So let's take a look at 5NF4. So this particular performance assessment, you'll notice, um, addresses 5NF4 and NF2. And it gives a situation relating to carpeting a family room. And here you can kind of see what that looks like. And then you can also see how you would go about scoring that. Okay? Gives you the answer key and some information on scoring. Okay? So you'll notice that within here there are different performance assessments. This Jogathon performance assessment for 5NF1. This one comes from the Illustrative Math site. So this is a link out to their resources. And it gives a scenario here about Alex training for a jogathon. And then it provides commentary of what you would look for um, as you're looking at the students' um, answers to this assessment. So those are pretty well developed. And we used a few of those throughout um, our assessments that we compiled and developed. Okay? So, um, the other thing I'd like to show you, and um, I'm going to go ahead and switch over here to another domain. But notice that, for example, in 50A3, there's an Adobe Acrobat symbol here, a PDF symbol. So what that's going to show you is this is going to be a PDF file. And the reason some of these are PDF files is they had a lot of images and we wanted to make sure that when you open these up, depending upon what you opened them in, the images wouldn't be 
um, skewed and in the wrong place, um, you know, some of that funky stuff that happens. So some of these we had to save as PDF, so they will not be editable. But you can either download or simply click on View. And then once again, use this print icon to print that assessment. Okay, so if you see that symbol, the Adobe symbol, that means it's a PDF file and it won't be editable. All right, so in summary, if you want to use an assessment, click on View and click on the print icon. If you're wanting to do some editing and make these your own, a um, couple options. You can open the file, choose File, Make a Copy, and save that into your Google Drive. Or if you want to open it in Word, you can, once you're in the document, click on File, Download, and choose Word Document, and then open that Download in Word. Um, so hopefully those options will give you some flexibility. Um, keep in mind for the last two options, you will need to be logged in to your D2Apps account. Um, huge thanks to the fifth grade assessment team. Um, we took this on and it was a huge task um, because we really um, wanted to put some time and effort in and do them right. Um, we also spent a lot of time editing these. Um, at least two people edited each assessment that you are seeing. Um, and so I want to give a huge thanks to Angie, um, Carrie, and Megan. And also Ann Brucker helped us with the startup process as we were getting this going. So huge shout out to them and big thanks for their time and energy on this. All right, so if you're interested in seeing how to do the Socrative assessments, which will be um, your digital assessments that we've developed, please watch part two. Thank you.